today we're going to show you how to change a starter on a 7.3 liter diesel. Pretty much all the years are basically the same. Uh, you can follow the same pattern. Now these are very, very easy to change out even compared to a lot of the gas engines out there. So uh, just follow along. There's a few tips here and there and stuff like that, a few pre precautions. Uh, besides that, they literally unbolt and come right off. And they're heavy uh, even compared to the gas ones. So just be ready for them once they do come off of there. Uh, make sure you can uh, your face is out of the way and stuff like that. We'll go through it step by step though. Now one of the first things you want to do is disconnect both negative battery cables on your batteries. There's one here on the driver's side and there's one over there on the passenger side. What I do is something like this. I'll wrap the terminal itself in a rag to isolate it and then I'll also isolate the terminal itself and if I can, I'll get the terminal away from the area also. That way there's never any chance of transferring current um, to that, that big lead down there by the starter would be taken off down there. So uh, that's about it up top here. Make sure the vehicle's in park. You don't need to jack it up or anything. These vehicles are tall enough. Uh, make sure it's in park, park and brake on, stuff like that, all those precautions like that. You could even chalk the wheels if you wanted to uh, and get underneath there. And we'll have some tools down there and we'll get it changed out. It's pretty easy. Okay, down here on the passenger side of the vehicle, on the bell housing right here, is the starter. You can see it's quite large, and it's it's powerful enough to turn over the big 7.3 engine on here. So like I said, it's pretty heavy, so be ready for it. Now there's three bolts that hold it in place. There's one right here, one right here, and then there's one way up here. But it's still not that hard to get to. These are 13 millimeter bolts on here. Besides that, the first thing you want to do after you disconnect those batteries and isolate them more safe is disconnect a large power lead that comes down here and then there's a little S terminal up here it's a little wire right here and just uh, a nut on that one also so let's get this one out of the way and then we can go out to the other one here so I'll try to stand you up here okay the nuts that hold these leads on here are usually pretty rusted on there so uh, go ahead and spray them real quick with some rust penetrant And it should be a 14 or a 15 on there. The nuts on these are pretty big compared to the gassers. Okay, I think this one's a 15 millimeter. And now we have the little S terminal. This one feels like it's an 8 millimeter on here. Usually they're 10 mil. So I wonder if this is something's been changed this one's definitely eight mil though now this one it was cranking or it was uh it was thumping the solenoid here was thumping on it and that's all it would do so yeah our terminals are fine on here maybe clean up a little bit that's about it though Okay, now that the wires are off to the side, however you want to do that. Now what I do is something like this. I take the, the wires, I put them next to the cooler lines here, and then uh, they, they're pressed against the pan, so just in case there's any accidental connection up top, I wrap them also. Now a flex head ratchet like this with a 13 millimeter deep will be your best friend on these. Like I said, these usually aren't in here too tight. We definitely want to get this top one out first. I have them pre-loosened. We'll just get it out of here. It's got to contort your body to get them out of there. They're not that long. You can see there's plenty of oil on them though. We'll get this one right here next. You can see it's really loosened. Get it out of there. It's behind the lines here. We'll get that out of the way. Keep our bolts, our bolts nearby. And this is the last one. You'll see it starting to come down like that. That's when you want to hold it like this. With one hand, use your thumb, press against this, and keep on wrenching. This way, it should not fall. nice about these big and heavy as they are the area surrounding them is, is very open so these things come right out of here 
All right, now once, once it's out of here, clean the whole flange area uh, of all the oil and dirt, corrosion, whatever you got on yours. That way when we bolt the new one up, it bolts up nice and flush, and you won't have no problems with grinding or weird issues like that. And nice and clean. And if you think you have any kind of starter or any kind of uh, flywheel teeth issues on here, now's the time to inspect them. You can see them all inside of there. And you can spin the crankshaft by hand up front a little at a time and inspect each one of your teeth the full uh, circumference of the flywheel. All right, now it's always a good idea to clean your terminals. This one's right here in particular is transferring a lot of juice. You don't want no resistance in the circuit. So let's check the general overall condition of them. Get a little tug like this. And besides that, we'll just, it's hard to show on camera here, but we're just going to take a wire brush and we're going to clean the terminals on here. And we'll get the corrosion off. Okay. So we're nice and shiny again. Okay, you should be able to see that. And once they're cleaned up, we'll spray some brake cleaner onto a rag. We'll take that. And we'll clean the corrosion off them. Okay. Nice and clean. And then we're going to put just a little bit of dielectric grease on there. And what that'll do is it'll protect the terminals on there from corrosion, from salt spray, uh, just anything that might be in your area. Environmental type stuff that will, uh, let me stick my hand through here. There we go. You can see everything now. It's a real little bit like that. You're coating the actual mating surface. Same thing on here. And you'll have a lot less problems this way. Well, once we get the terminal on there, we'll put a little bit more on there. Uh, but you don't want to put too much where it's contacting on there. Something like that. You know, a slight glaze on there. And make sure you clean all your bolts on here. On the back side here where the threads are especially. The heads don't matter so much, but if you want to be really clean, you can clean them all. Uh, but especially the threads on here. And before the new starter goes on, uh, make sure you have a bolt on hand so you can put it up in there and start it while you're holding the starter up. And do another quick wipe on here. Now, of course, if you have a major oil leaks on here, you're going to want to fix them uh, so they don't soak the new starter. Uh, but the design is not as bad as the, the Taurus vehicles where the starters get totally soaked. Okay, now going back in. What you're going to want to do is get it up in there. Just make sure you have the correct holes lined up on here, like so. And the starter solenoid's way up here. You're going to hold the starter with one hand and get a bolt in with the other. Quite a few threads. So you're safe. And then you can grab a second bolt and get it into there. Now you should be able to thread these in pretty easy like this. And then we'll snug them up just enough so it holds the starter up like this. Same thing over here. But don't tighten them down all the way just yet. You want to get that top bolt lined up. Well, it's a little harder to get to. Now, once the top bolt is threaded in by hand, you can feel it. I would say it's fine. All our holes are lined up. You can proceed to tighten these, and it will fully line it up. So that the top one should simply go in by hand. Just a little hard to get to.
tighten all these. Okay, now onto the terminals. You're going to do a small one first and then the big one. It's a small one so far up there. So get that one on and the nut on and everything. And if possible, I reuse uh, the factory nuts. And these should be all spin all the way on there. And by hand. Get this big one on here. Tighten the small one. Just be very careful with it. It doesn't take much uh, to tighten that one. And we'll tighten this big one up here. Again, don't tighten it too much. This is a tough stud on here, but it's always easier to break these studs off or make this solenoid start spinning on here. So be very careful with the big one too. At this point, all three bolts are tight on here. Our two connections are tight. Everything's back together and aligned. We can go back up top and put the better connections back on and test her out. All right, so let's try it out. Success.